Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to our weekly recap video. I'm super excited because we're finally at a point in the year, I think, to where we actually get to sit outside and do this video because we're not trying to avoid the heat. It is supposed to get to 91 today, but our nighttime temperatures have been dropping significantly, so it takes forever to get that warm. In fact, this next Monday, we're expecting a high of 73 which is insane. I love it because I don't really love the extreme heat. So it's just gonna give me like renewed energy to be outside and I'm excited for that. So there's nothing I really need to talk about before we get into the videos from last week. The first video was flower arrangement and succulent craft. So in that video, we were prepping for Erin's mom's birthday party dinner, and um, I wanted to create a flower arrangement for her as part of her gift uh, from our cut flower garden. And then I also was in charge of the name tags for like the seating arrangement around the dinner table. Um, and so I just put together some fun cork succulent name tags, and I just wanted to show you my process. So uh, Far Farina May said, does anybody know for sure if that's Aster's yellow on her sunflower? It would be horrible if it was, and that's my favorite of her sunflowers. So I've done some reading. I don't know an awful lot about Aster's yellow disease. It is a disease. I don't think that that's what I'm dealing with in my sunflowers. That's the only sunflower that looks like that. And I think it's just a mutation. And I've had a lot of other people say that it's so like several other options of what it could be. Uh, we are going to remove that. I think I'll do that today. I'll remove it just in case, but I don't have leaf hoppers, which is how the disease is spread. There are no insects out there that are really bugging my stuff at all. And we're keeping a pretty close eye on things. Um, so I don't think that that's what it is, thankfully. Uh, Simply Ginger said, totally off topic. However, I noticed watching your channel, you've gone through blonde, oh, uh, dark to auburn hair. You wear the auburn perfectly. What color are you using? It's amazing. Um, so yeah, I had a blonde phase, which I kind of didn't like that phase so much. Um, my hair is naturally a little bit darker color, but the sun bleaches it out so bad and it usually ends up looking like a copper penny. I don't know what color my um, hairstylist uses. In fact, I have a hair appointment today. I never had a gray hair until I got pregnant with Benjamin. <laughs> that was the first time I got a little tiny bit of gray. So now I'm working on covering that up. So that's, that's fun. Uh, Isabella said, your mother-in-law's gift is beautiful. Which fonts did you use for the name tags? They came out great. I used a different font for every single name tag. What I did is I went to free font, oh, let's see, no, I Googled free fonts, I think. And then you can go to, there's several websites where you can download free fonts, um, but there's like a preview window where you can try out the font and I would type the name and then I could take a screenshot and then crop it and then put it, like drag it over to a Word document and then print it out. And that's how I did it. And I just chose a different font for each one of them. I actually had intended on hand like doing hand calligraphy. I used to be so much better at stuff like that and my hand was much more steady and it's just not as much anymore. So I bought the new calligraphy pens. I tried, I tried to write out names and then I just thought, nope, I need to practice. So I looked up a couple YouTube videos. That might be a good winter time project to like hone my calligraphy skills a little bit more, but it was far easier just grabbing them and printing them. Quispy queen, quispy queen, queen. Oh, that's hard to say. <laughs> Said, what is in those packets to preserve cut flowers? I was always told aspirin, but I'm pr pretty sure it's not. I don't think it's aspirin. I'm not sure what's in those. I should probably know what's in those, Erin. Should do like a little research to know what <laughs> preservative I'm using. Not that anybody's drinking it or anything like that. I just use the little packets that come with the grocery store flowers because I buy so many of them during the winter time that I end up with just piles of those hanging around. But you can buy tubs of flower preservative. Um, I think you can order them on Amazon. My parents used to carry it down at the garden center. Your local florist might sell it. Um, yeah, it does really help lengthen the lifespan of your flowers. Kristen said, I just love your videos. Do you have someone in the family who crochets? I've seen Benjamin with a couple of lovey crocheted toys. No, so there was actually a gal who watches our video who sent us three loveys. In fact, the two of his favorite loveys are still of that original three. Um, she sent us those before he was even born. And I didn't know if Benjamin was gonna be like the pacifier baby or uh, whatever, you know, some kids suck their thumbs. He loved the loveys and he carried him around in his mouth for a lot, lot of time. Like he sucked on their ears. It was getting kind of gross. I'd have to like uh, rotate him through the wash. So I'd have one in the wash every, every day for a while. And he still carries him around. He doesn't suck on them anymore. Um, but anyway, she sent us the three and then I contacted her later and I said, can I pay, like pay you? Can I hire you? to crochet me for more. I don't crochet, I knit. So I could have put something together, but she did such a fantastic job. 
it was really nice for her. And she did. She sent us four more. So we now have seven. Next video is flower alley update and maintenance. So Michaela, oh, in that video, um, I took after the flower alley pots because the, all 10 of them needed some serious maintenance. They needed to be trimmed back. I added more slow release fertilizer on top of the soil. Um, I treated some insects in a couple of them, earwigs and aphids. Um, and then I took after the sweet potato vines in our barn pots. It was just, it felt good. I, I always feel like lightened somehow when I do a bunch of trimming like that. So Michaela said, what is the name of the bush behind the pink gum frina that is purple in color? It was in the first part of the video where you were explaining the pest control in Flower Alley. That was actually a blue chiffon Rosa Sharon. That's the uh, shrub that's right behind the gum frina. But the blue chiffon has beautiful like lavendery periwinkle bloom colored blooms right now. I love it. Cam said, hey, do you know what's going on with the ridiculous coleus? Mine's got a bright green border. Yeah, mine too. I don't know what is going on with it. You know, some of these hybrid plants, sometimes they start to revert. Um, and that's oftentimes why a lot of plants get like booted from the proven winners line and something new that's been improved gets put into its spot. Uh, and I think ridiculous was originally meant to replace marooned, which I loved and I never had any problem with that plant. And Ridiculous was awesome last year for us, but this year it started blooming right away and it has the chartreuse green line around it, which I don't think it's supposed to have. So my bet, or my guess, is that they'll, they've noticed this already and um, they'll probably, they've probably already worked, are working on improvements and they'll have something else to replace it that's got a stronger color. It's just really interesting what plants do. I mean, sometimes you get one that just is like a powerhouse every year and it does the same thing for you every year and then you'll have like a one-off year where all of a sudden it just kind of like gets a mind of its own. And I thought at first it was our weather. I thought the spring has been so cool and it's been uh, just atypical for us. And so I thought it was kind of messing with the plants. I mean, maybe that could have been a little bit, but it kind of makes me feel better to, feel, to hear that one of you guys are dealing with the same thing I am. It's still a pretty plant. It just looks different than last year. Chris said, uh, Laura, I live in Nampa, Idaho, which is just like right down the road from us. Wondering when you do bulbs, how do you plant bulbs so you aren't digging up when doing planting for annuals or perennials? So we plant our bulbs, like our spring blooming bulbs, tulip, daffodils, that sort of thing, usually end of September, October time. So so in terms of planting annuals, oftentimes I leave the uh, leaves of the tulips and the daffodils up because they need to stay up until they've fully, you know, yellowed and died back to, you know, soak in the sun and get energy to form blooms for next year. But usually about the time they're done is about the time I'm ready to plant annuals in the late spring. So I just leave that, those leaves there and so I know exactly where each one of the bulbs are and then I can go ahead and place all my annuals so that I won't hit any of the bulbs. As far as perennials go, there have been a few areas in my flower beds where I plant massive amounts of bulbs, and then I wanna go in, like I, I didn't do it in order. Typically, I wanna plant my whole flower bed first with perennials, shrubs, all those sorts of things, and then go in and plant bulbs, but I don't always do that. So in those areas where I've got bulbs already planted, I do end up digging up some bulbs when I'm digging holes for bigger perennials. Um, and so and that's just kind of the name of the game. It just happens. And so what I do is I just replant those bulbs just nearby. So I plant my perennial where I want it. And then I just take the bulbs that I dug up, which is usually very few, like maybe three, four or something like that. And then I just dig another hole and pop those in the ground right next to it. Samantha said, how do you know when it's time to cut annuals back as opposed to just replacing them for fall annuals altogether? Uh, my local garden center has mums and I'm looking at tired super tinnias like it might be time. And it might be, it's a little bit early for us. Like I am tempted. I, in fact, I've got my first shipment of mums in the greenhouse right now. They're um, still green. There's not a lot of color on them, but I've been noticing a lot of like at Home Depot, I think they're full on mums in the front of their garden center display which I think they're capitalizing on people who are wanting fall because mums don't last that long. Um, and so if you buy them now and it's still too hot, they're gonna bloom out and you will have a bunch of the fall still left where you'll want color. And so you might wanna go rebuy again. So there's like some, like, I don't know, what, what is that? Not marketing, kind of. I don't know, like my parents' garden center, they've brought in a few fall things, but only the things that will um, last through the whole season and then they'll start bringing in more things later on in the season when it's more of an appropriate time to plant. You just want to make sure you're not throwing stuff out when it's still summer like temperatures. Like I am so tempted to plant. I have some tired stuff too and I've actually pulled a few supertinias out of our landscape already that have just succumbed to too much water because I can't I can't fix our overspray of our grass sprinklers in some areas um, and I'm ready. I'm ready to do it but I'm just holding off 
just for a little bit longer. Next video was visiting the garden center and planting a few new things. So in that video, I was just feeling new plants. I just wanted to go down to the garden center and see what they had on hand. And it's always fun to go down, even like during the dog days of summer and just to see what's pretty because yeah, it's good to go down all the time though because there might be some things that you notice at the garden center blooming and you think, I don't have any of that in my yard. I'm missing that, I need to have that. Um, so it was just really fun. I just got um, several small things that I planted around in the garden. Everything's doing great so far. Um, Olivia said, do your parents do any shipping? I like I liked a few of the small plants. They don't ship any plants. They ship pretty much everything else. And they've got all of, not all of their seeds, but many of their bulk seeds, a lot of the seeds that I plant in my own garden, um, they have those online and it's andrewseed.com. We'll link them down below. Um, and they will ship, like if people see stuff in tour videos or whatever when we're down there, oftentimes they'll get calls or emails saying, hey, I saw this in the background or Laura showed this in a video. Um, can I ship that? And they'll always do that. And they're working on adding things more and more as time goes on because the whole website thing for them is brand new and they're just kind of working it out right now. Um, but plant, plant shipping is a whole different ball game. Um, and I don't know that they'll ever want to get into that because oh, I wouldn't want to personally. Uh, Melissa said, this is off point here, but hopefully you or Aaron can help me. I'm trying to find the fold up green waste cloth. Can you use for weeds and such? Uh, would you be able to link it somewhere? So that I'm thinking you might be referring to either the kangaroo pop-up bag, um, which is the one that you can, it like pops up in, it's green. It pops up into kind of a big bag and then you can collapse it down to store it. Um, we will link that one down below. There are a few different versions, you guys. There's different sizes and then there's one with a soft bottom and one with a hard shell bottom. I wouldn't even mess with the soft bottom kangaroo pop-up bags. Just in my personal experience, especially if you're getting the bigger bags, get the one with the hard bottom. You will thank me, like trust me. Um, if you're just doing like little, like deadheading, whatever, and you want a real small bag, I think the, the soft bottom's okay because you're most likely not dragging it around on the ground. But the big ones, I get them so heavy that I can't lift them and I have to drag them. And so they last so much longer if you get that um, hard bottom. The other thing that I have used in videos, so you might be referring to is the DeWitt leaf tarp and it's just a big green square tarp it's not huge it's sizable like you can fit a lot of stuff on there and then there's handles on the corners and they're really tough and i really like that one too so we'll link both of them down below uh rest of the question is also i know you use johnny seeds and what other company is is it that you use for seeds so this week we are putting a video up it's long like an hour and a half long um, but i talked about all my seeds for 2021 and i know this video is coming out early it's usually when we do in the winter time but i'm already prepped for next year just because i think i need to be because we are going to have an infant next year and i just don't in the new space and i don't want to have all that extra stress of having to make sure i'm organized with my seeds and make sure i have them all on hand and all that business so i thought you know what it was really hot that day i sat inside in the plant room where it was air conditioned and i just showed you all my seeds that i have and also talked about where I order all my seeds and where I get all my seeds. So anyway, be watching for that video. Uh, Chase said, do you and Aaron get recognized from your videos when you go out? Yes, we do. A little bit more now than we used to earlier. Um, it's kind of crazy. It's a really small world, honestly. I, I swear, the longer we've been doing this, um, the longer you realize how connected everybody is in some way, like to some degree. Like, you know, you know a person who knows a person who knows that person. It's just kind of crazy. You can kind of connect your lives together in some way. But yeah. Next question is from Ernest. Laura, I have to ask why there are so many political ads on your videos. More so, are you aware many are not in the best interest of many? Um, I think the reason why you're seeing more political ads is because we have an election coming up. So that's just something that everybody's talking about. And um, that's just a lot of what we're seeing. We don't control, we, we don't pick what ads come up in front of our videos. Um, I think there's a way that you can tailor what you're seeing on your end in terms of ads. I've not ever really researched it, but I guess that there's a, like maybe three dots or some kind of a cog on the ad where you can click that and then just say like, this ad doesn't pertain to me or I don't know what the message is or like, I don't wanna see ads that look like this. And so you can kind of hone that so that you're seeing things that, you know, I don't know, you might look into that. The other way um, that you wouldn't see those is if you wanted to do like a premium membership on YouTube. I think it's YouTube Premium or YouTube Red, something like that, but it's $10 a month and then you don't see any ads at all. So that's the only way that you can for sure not see any ads. But just so you guys know, because we do get messages about ads that play beforehand, we don't pick those out. We don't have control over what plays. 
they just play. A uh, last question from that video was from Sandra. Hearing of fires in your state, are you far enough away to be safe? Yes, we are. There is a fire, it's a big one. It's like 50,000 plus acres. I don't know how big it is now. Have you seen any updates, Erin? No, last night. That was like two days ago. It was 50,000 plus acres, 20% contained, and it's burning about 70 miles away from us. So a few of the pictures I've posted recently, they look kind of eerie, like the lighting. It almost makes my stuff look fake because it gives everything kind of a grainy appearance because of all the smoke. I mean, we're far enough away that we were in no danger of having anything, you know, be on fire here. Um, but our air quality is really, really poor. So we're only doing like very small projects outside, like keeping things alive and not doing like big projects just to stay inside a little bit more. It's not super smoky though this morning, not as bad. So we felt okay to come out here. It felt like I can see blue sky above us, which is different than it has been in the last you know, like three or four days. And I'm hoping cooler temperatures this weekend, cooler temperatures, hopefully, like, I don't know if we're gonna get rain. I didn't see any rain on the forecast. Hopefully the cool temperature, temperatures doesn't mean wind. Usually when you see like a 91 to 73 de degree drop for us, that means insane amounts of wind, which can mean the fire will spread. Um, and I'm hoping that that's not the case. We'll see. Next video is creating a water garden with a waterfall. So Aquascape sent us out this tabletop waterfall fountain kit. We unboxed it in an unboxing video like two, three weeks ago or so, and we didn't even take it out of the box. Um, we just thought, you know what, we should just do a separate video because this looks like a fun project. It looks like something different. We don't do a lot with water gardening. And so that's what we did. We put it together, showed you how it goes together. It was really easy. And then I went to some pet stores and got some aqu like aquarium, aquatic plants because no garden center around here currently has any like legit perennial type pond plants for sale at this point of the year. But I think it ended up turning out really pretty. So Lynn said, do you think you will add baby koi for Benjamin? No, I actually don't want to add any other living things around this house. We have four chickens, uh, we have Benjamin, we have ourselves, and then we will have our new baby in January. And I think that that is like, that's good. <laughs> I didn't want to have to worry about keeping water pristinely clean and feeding something else just for a little while. Like I know my limits and that's, that's it. And honestly, a lot of the things that we put together like that, I will probably, I mean, I think I'm gonna take that down to the garden center where they can display it inside and just enjoy the water down there. I think customers will enjoy that. It sounds really pretty and they've got more time to keep up stuff like that. So oftentimes when we put together a project like that, it's super fun for me to do. I really enjoy it. Um, I enjoy showing you guys the process, but I don't necessarily keep everything here. I mean. That would be insane if I kept every fairy garden and every succulent arrangement and every every little project we put together, I would need to build another house to like store all of these things. Um, so yeah, I just look for like people that I can give them to. Usually we check with friends and family or I take it down to the garden center. Um, there are a few things I keep here myself, um, but there are some things I farm out. Lisa said, is it just me or has Cheddar been making more and more appearances? I just expect him to be always sleeping inside. <laughs> Yeah, they have been in more videos lately. They've been more social. They usually are fighting Cheddar and Russell together. Like if they're in a video together, they're usually rolling around fighting with each other. Lisa said, random question or concern. My cats would love to drink out of, this, out of something like this, but with the pea lilies being toxic, if ingested, does that cause concern with the roots in the water or is it just the plant? I, I don't know for sure. I would honestly think that they would need to eat it, like eat the plant in order to experience any adverse symptoms, but I'm not sure about that. But it won't matter because like I said, this is going down to the garden center, so it won't be near my kitties. Next video was tour of our West Side Moon Garden. So I just wanted to show you kind of late season tour of how everything was looking out there just because we started to plant a lot and then I stopped planting because I figured out I didn't want to do a moon garden over there. Although the stuff over there is doing really, really well. Like the Super Vena Whiteout is crazy. It's beautiful and the Super Chino Vista Snowdrift, amazing. And the urns look really good. I just don't like that massive amount of white in that big of a space with how bright and sunny it is over there. I just don't think it's a really good look. So while I'll probably keep a lot of white over there, I'm gonna start incorporating in purple, and some blues and probably some soft apricot and yellow and just something to make it feel more me. First question is from Bianca. Anyone else notice how awesome the playlists of the years have been reorganized? Thanks, Erin. I was scrolling down years because I've been watching you from beginning to end. Best YouTube channel I've ever come across. Thank you, Bianca, that's so sweet. And yes, Erin did organize our playlist 
chronologically because it's really easy to search for subjects, like specific subjects. Like if you put in the search bar, you know, garden answer, hydrangea, garden answer, tomato, all the videos related to that subject will come up, but it's really hard to search chronologically. Um, so if we don't have playlists by subject, subject, but rather have them by year, I think it makes it a little bit easier which I think that was a really good call. I didn't even know he had done this. He does all kinds of things like this that I don't even realize that are really helpful. And I started seeing comments come through like, I love the, the playlist um, by years. And so I had to ask him like, what did you do? <laughs> did you do something new? Aaron just said that we have received a couple of messages from people saying they were unhappy that the playlists were gone by subject. But I just think that they've probably realized at this point that you can search for those things fairly easily, like garden answer, fairy garden. Um, so I think that the years is probably a lot more helpful than by subject. Vera said, will you be doing more winter sewing this year? I don't know. I did that project in January and I'm having a baby in January. So unless I'm feeling like amazing and awesome and ready to get out and start to garden like sometime in February, maybe I'll do some. Honestly, it wasn't as effective as just seeding things in trays. I can see the benefits, like it did work. Um, the benefits are it doesn't take up space inside. You don't have to have grow lights. You don't have to have seedling heat mats. Um, they're fairly low maintenance. Although I did have to water mine a lot because we don't get a lot of rainfall or snow. Well, we didn't last year. We're very dry here. So I did have to, even in the winter time, make sure mine stayed moist. Uh, which some of you may not have to do that. I mean, the whole point is to like water them in initially and then keep the cap off of the milk jug open so that they can receive any just natural moisture that's coming down. Um, and so oftentimes you don't have to water them at all. So I see the benefits big time and it was a really fun experiment, but we've got our setup in a way at this point where I can start quite a number of things inside and it's very organized and efficient and things come up better and they're all separated in their nice little cells. So I don't have to mess with separating roots of plants and things like that so anyway we'll see though I mean I love trying out new stuff so Laura said was that Cleome 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 planted around the base of the urns do you like it yes it is it's the do you remember what what kind it was it's white Senorita Blanca is what it's called and no I don't like it <laughs> and I realized I might like it better had I planted it in back of something else that was kind of covering the bottom. I find it to be a very messy looking plant and the, even the bloom looks messy to me. Um, I've grown uh, Cleome a couple of times and I know it's a staple in some of your guys' gardens and I know in the south, I think in the south it's really like it's a widely grown plant. It's not here where I'm at um, and I don't know. Maybe I just need to try, I'll keep trying. I always keep trying plants and sometimes it just needs to grow on me. Um, like I used to, what plant did I used to not like at all? Oh, uh, Nifofia, Red Hot Pokers. And it wasn't until like I got the flash points, which are a beautiful creamy, like creamy yellow. And then it goes up to a, a darker yellow. I love that plant, but I used to hate that plant. I used to hate alliums, the big purple alliums. And now I love them. So sometimes it just takes me a while to figure out where I like to use it, how to have success with it, um, etc. So at this point, don't love it. I've almost actually pulled them. I told Aaron the other day, like, I think I would just enjoy that area much more if I just pulled all those plants and didn't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> Jennifer said, are those suckers at the bottom of the Autumn Brilliance service berry? Yes, they are. And I didn't notice until I was watching that video back and I thought, oh, I need to address that. But we will do a video later about sucker stopper, which is a way to eliminate those suckers that grow at the base of trees. Like it happens around a lot of our crab apples, but it's just not the right time of year to do it. So be watching for that later on. Cindy said, you mentioned in an earlier video that you needed to prune the arborvitas to keep them to a single point. I also prefer the single point look. So when is the best time to do that? And how do you do it without creating a gap? It will create a little bit of a gap. Aaron lightly trimmed. Did you trim all of them or a good portion lightly, of them? Yeah. He lightly trimmed all of ours. Oh, hey Russell, buddy. Um, and he did that earlier this spring and we've not done any pruning like during the heat of the summer. We didn't want to expose any of the underlying uh, leaves because we didn't want them to burn. Um, so I think pruning those like at the time where we are normally pruning stuff when it's a little, do you want to come up here? When the weather is a little less intense, I think is a good time, but it will naturally create some gaps. Uh oh, you didn't make it, bud. Come in. Come on, kitty, kitty. You wanna come up here? There you go. There he is. Maybe it was a bad idea to invite you up here. Now I can't see my computer screen. Yeah, I guess that's true, Aaron. Uh, Aaron said you should just be pruning them when they were young. These were not trimmed properly at the growers. Um, and so 
which we didn't know any better. So we got a hold of them, we planted them. We didn't know we needed to be on the pruning right away. Um, and so like we learned something from that. And yeah, which is unfortunate because I think um, they were just being grown like traditional arborvitas are grown. Okay, we need to reposition you so you're not like, <laughs> he's just, he just wants to be on the pillow. I have to use a pillow to prop my computer up, kind of like a table. Anyway, I can't remember where I was at with that, but I think I answered that. <laughs> uh, Julie said, I want that purple vertigo grass and could not find them anywhere uh, this season. Any suggestions? I think this season was hopefully a one-off and hopefully we'll be back to normal things next year. And I think you should be able to find them at your local garden center. Um, you can order some things online. I mean, we'll always recommend local garden center first, but Proven Winners, Dot com does sell quite a, a number of their things online just as a convenience. It's not the cheapest way to buy things and they know that because shipping plants is an incredibly difficult business and so it, it raises the, the price of things quite a bit to ship stuff. Um, but they realize that some of you guys aren't like don't have a really good local garden center source or maybe you don't live near one and so they do offer that as a way that you can kind of fill in some gaps in your yard if you can't find exactly what you're looking for. Um, so anyway, definitely uh, chat with your local garden center, tell them that you're looking for that. That way they can have it on their minds as they're doing winter's orders this winter. Oh, we're on the last video. Uh, it was, I'm so happy with my watermelon harvest and oh my goodness, was I ever happy with that. I had told Aaron um, the night before we were talking about maybe doing a watermelon harvest video and I said, well, I think I've only got four or five out there, but that's okay, we'll go out there and harvest those. 25 watermelons later, um, I had everything that was ready to come out harvested and there's still more out there growing, which is like absolutely insane to me because I don't have a whole lot of experience growing watermelon. Um, and yeah, so that land has just been amazing. And I just, I thought that we weren't gonna have very much, much success based on planting everything so late and all those things. I've talked about it a million times. I feel like I'm kind of a broken record on that, but um, I think that ground laying fallow for so long and not have any, any production on it, I think I, that soil is pretty darn rich because everything is just growing so amazingly well. I did lightly amend with land and sea and biotone and like we just uh, fertilized with flower tone all, all of the dahlias last week and you should see it. Aaron and I were just out there this morning and I told him like, holy crap, look at those dahlias. We just put flower tone in the ground and they've only had it on board for like five days and they've already shot up. Like they are just putting on amazing amounts of growth all of a sudden. Um, anyway, Deb said, seeing all your garden vines make me think of a few quick questions. Will you have a video showing how you clean out your new gardens in the fall? Uh, probably. My dad suggested that we hire out a couple cows, <laughs> which is not a bad idea, honestly. If we could, uh, cause it's already fenced. We just have to put up like a hot wire uh, around just the openings and just let some cows in there to clean up all the vines and all the plants and all that business. Um, I think that would be a really good idea cause we're gonna uh, take up all the irrigation, all the drip line and all of that anyway, um, because we're moving our space. But I mean, likely we probably won't do that, but we'll think about putting together a video of clean out. Um, Aaron, I hope you do, will do videos as you build your compost system. You listening, Aaron? Will you have your compost system? Whoops. Not You're not sleeping today. Will you have your compost system ready to receive all the refuse from the garden? P possibly. Maybe. Quite possibly. Also, since keeping compost moist is key to success, will you tie the compost bins into your irrigation system somehow? Doubt it. Doubt it. I just started composting this year and I'm excited and amazed how the garden waste quickly turns to beautiful compost for my beds. And I'm very excited about that as well. I'm excited that Aaron is manning that project instead of me the best. Uh, Lisa said, can you save the watermelon seeds out of the melons that you were eating or is there a specific time to do that? Uh, I can't just because I planted mostly open pollinated varieties. I think the only one that wasn't was the Joyride, which is a hybrid. It's a seedless watermelon. Um, what happens when you plant pumpkins, squash, or watermelons too close to each other that are open pollinated? They cross pollinate. And so while you can uh, harvest all of your fruit from this year's vines and they're true to variety, like if you plant a crimson sweet watermelon, next to another open pollinated. This year, you'll get crimson sweet watermelon off that vine. But if you gather seeds from that melon and plant them next year, you could get one of the two parent plants. You could get some weird cross. You're just not guaranteed to get that original variety that you planted. And I knew that going in. It's just that I like to separate open pollinated varieties, like 
far enough so that they won't cross pollinate. I mean, that's a super difficult thing to control. So I'd either have to really um, decide on what varieties I want to grow and stick to those, or I can just go whole hog, plant a bunch of open pollinated out there, and then just plan to buy my seeds again. So that's something to consider. And I have repurchased most, if not all of my seeds already for all of those things out there. Um, and it's really, honestly, not a super expensive endeavor because you get so many seeds. I get so many of them from our, the garden center, which you can get them online. I talked about that earlier, but the bulk prices are so incredibly good for like $2. You get so many seeds that will last a lot of years. In fact, all the watermelons I planted this year, I still have enough to plant next year and probably the year after from what I bought this year. So anyway, Rachel said, curious what the four, four tall trees next to the covered tunnel are. They have dark leaves. Those are the Corinthian lindens that we were gonna plant where the oak trees were removed. We're gonna do a little hedge of trees right there, but we've decided that we're gonna plant those Corinthian lindens out on the new property, and we'd like to have something more rounded in, in a shape over here. So I currently have nothing over, I'm looking at it right now, I currently have nothing sitting over there and I haven't decided quite what I wanna put back there. I did plant an October glory maple right behind the chicken coop and I'm loving that, but I don't know that I want to repeat that exact tree. So I'm just waiting on it, just chill on it for a little while and we'll decide next spring what we want to go there. But I want something that's a little bit more clean. Uh, I want something with a bigger, bolder leaf. The Corinthian lindens are beautiful, beautiful trees, but they do produce these little, um, are they seeds kind of? I don't know if they're seeds exactly. Anyway, they tend to have, they have smaller leaves and they tend to just have a little bit more of a wild appearance to them. Um, so I want to put them now out there. That's what happens when we, when we put trees in their place and don't plant them for a long time. Then all of a sudden I have a lot of time to think about, do I really like that tree there? And then I end up changing my mind. So Mel said, what a great video. I love seeing the transformation of your new space and what you were able to grow the first year. So impressive. Are you going to plant the same type of watermelon next year or try out new varieties? I will probably try out new varieties. I will do Crimson Sweets again, most likely because the yield is crazy and the taste is really good. Sugar Babies were awesome. I would like to try out some new varieties of seedless though. I think because obviously seedless watermelons are way easier to eat. I enjoy eating those so much more. Um, and you know, it's possible to the joy ride. I do have seeds left over. I'll probably plant more of those again next year because we're gonna have everything so much better organized in terms of irrigation that I'll have them in an area where I can cut water earlier instead of having to keep irrigate them, irrigating them because they're tied into more tomatoes and pumpkins as well and cantaloupe. And you know, I could have put, somebody suggested putting valves in the line, like the drip line so I could turn off the watermelons. And I, I wish I could do that, but I didn't organize even good enough to not plant my watermelons in with my cantaloupes. Had I put all my watermelons in one row or even one and a half rows, I could have turned the water off to just those. But I've got like two watermelons planted and then a cantaloupe and then another watermelon. So nothing is really, it's kind of willy nilly. So it's really hard to uh, cut water to anything because I still need to keep irrigating my cantaloupe. So anyway, it could just have been a water issue. The texture of those joy rides was perfect. They were just slightly not as intense in flavor as the others. So anyway. Oh, last question. Jennifer said, if the packet says 90 days harvest, is that number from the day you plant, the day it germinated, germinated or from the day you see fruit? Um, so typically, like in the case of planting seeds outside, that typically means from the time that they germinate and they're a little seedling, um, then you count 90 days from then. If you're doing like uh, transplants, like tomatoes or peppers or eggplant, those kinds of things that you get at the garden center or you're starting inside, the maturity day typically means from the day you plant them in the ground. So not from the day you planted the seed inside, like really early on in the season. It usually means like, okay, so you've started your seed and you have this nice little tomato plant in May, like let's say May 1st, it's okay to plant, which I don't think I'd ever plant anything that early, but um, just for ease sake. Um, let's say you plant that tomato start out May 1st and the maturity day is 90 days. So then you know that Mar May, June, July, toward the end of July, that's when you can expect to start seeing fruit from that tomato or mature fruit, I should say. And that looks like that is it for this week's recap video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye.